Okay, I think we are live. Let me paste the URL for that onto our page. Oops, not that. <laughs> so if you guys want to share this with your friends, that's the URL. But uh, please don't click on it now because it's just going to play the, the video of us, like watching the video of us, which will be a bit weird. Anyway, welcome to Ask a Lichenologist round two, round point five, something like that. Um, so the goal here is just to get a bunch of people from the California Lichen Society together online to talk about some contributions to our iNaturalist project, which is called Ask a Lichenologist. Um, for those who don't know, iNaturalist is a website where you can sh record and share observations from nature, including observations of lichens. And we've been soliciting observations of lichens through the website to have you guys, the experts, uh, help identify them. So before we get started, I want to just go around and do introductions. Um, I'm Kenichi Weda. I help run iNaturalist.org. I'm a very recent California Lichen Society member and a very recent convert to the lichen religion, <laughs> which means that I don't know nearly as much as these fine people. Um, so why don't you guys uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, so starting with uh, Shelly. All right, yeah. I'm Shelly Benson, and I am currently the president of the California Lichen Society. And I've been studying lichens for, I don't know, I think about the last 15 years, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm ready to look at some lichens. Great, Christine. and I'm uh, Christine Walker, and I'm a fairly new convert as well, and I just came on to the California Lichen Society to uh, organize some field trips and educational opportunities, and then decided to be a part of this and yes, uh, branch out if you want on uh, iNaturalist. Anna, uh, my name is Hannah. I've been with Cal's for a few years and studying lichen for a few years before that. Uh, learning a lot as I go, always asking questions. Um, I do outreach for Cal's, trying to get people and information more accessible, and uh, yeah. Cool. And we're trying to get Tom Carlberg on the line, but <laughs> seems to be more challenging than uh, heretofore anticipated. Um, cool. So guys, if you find a cool picture in the iNaturalist project and you want to talk about it, please paste in the, the URL. Um, into the chat window here, and I'll open it up. But just to get things started, um, let's look at this. Um, so, screen share that window. So this is an observation by iNaturalist user named Zabby. Um, looks like he made it down in Ventura County, California. Oh, and I should paste you guys the URL, just in case you want to look at it. Can you guys all see that? Can everyone see this page? Uh, we're loading it. Okay. Hannah, are you good? I can see it. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'll switch to the uh, larger version. Uh, okay. Or you can click down here. And you can see that. Yeah, this is your video. This will get over there. Maybe that's what I got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to see this. Yeah, I'm going to see this. Yeah, I'm going to Thank you. 
You guys can can you guys see it now? Yes. Yeah, we can see it. All right. What do you guys think this is? But look. Looks like an umbilic area. Can you get that bigger? Can you get that really thin? I guess it's just this. Yeah, it looks like umbilic area. Probably say yeah, because that's the most common brown one with atrophy. It looks like that. That would be my best guess. Do you remember what species that was? It's Phaea. P H. Yeah. All right. Why don't you? Uh, can someone explain like why you guys think this is on Delicaria? Okay. Well, let's see. So this one, it's it's hard to tell. You can't see the the umbilicus, the like the one little umbilical cord that attaches it to the rock. But but um, that they're you know, just the shape of the phallus. It's kind of round, somewhat amorphous, like in shape. And there is actually a little dimple on it, and so it kind of that gives an indication, like I know it's attached with this umbilicus. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so it's kind of hard if you haven't seen it, and if you can't pop it off the, the rock to flip it over, it's it's really hard to to see this. But just from experience, having seen it, it's um, it's um, just kind of know the shape and the texture. Um, so if you are on the field and you do pop it off the rock, what you want to look for is that one attachment to the rock substrate. And yeah. it is mostly on rock and not bark, right? Right, it's on rock. 100%, so pretty much sure. And so what happens is like those edges, the edges are free, pretty much. They're not attached to the rock. It's just right at the center where that little boat is. Um, and then, yeah, they have a Flamulous look. So they do kind of look like these, yeah, little shingles that are stuck to the rock. And you use the word stellus, so kind of like on this, so you have a good background and like what's on that structure is the stellus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole the the whole brown part, but like each, each individual round brown part is the whole white thing. Which is called a phallus. Right. And the speckles there. Yeah, and so this and so this like in the, the umbilical area, it has aplothecia, which are the structures that are the fruiting body for the fungus. And and aplothecia in this like are those little brown black dots. Cool. And on this I don't know if this is true of all umbilicaria, but I know for this umbilicaria it's got really weird, like spirally aplothecia, right? Yeah, the apothecia in umbilical are really intricate. Yeah, they do have kind of neat spirally. Um, some of them almost look like Celtic knots, but they're kind of folded in on on each other. Um, but yeah, that's a neat character to look at for itself. So that's about as close as I can get to this image, but you can see how they have, kind of have that structure. Um, this one taken in Southern California, but they're pretty common all over California, I think. Yeah, I see what Lodo has on the range. I mean, like, yeah, I know. I've seen them up in oh, Oregon. Okay. Oh, now I can see the post up of the Apathesia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've definitely seen them here in the Bay Area. Um, mm -hmm. and I see how, how do you guys know that it's Fea? Uh, there are that many, you can see, as I scroll through the book here, I think as far as being brown, let me just take a look. Yeah, there are a few others, I guess, that it could be. Um, but I know Umbilicaria is the most common, and with the brown color like that, that would be my best guess. Yeah. Oh, the book. Oh. Yeah. So when you end up seeing these, the the apothecia is an important feature that you look at to see if they had. Those, those fissures are those kind of spiral patterns. All 
Are you looking for to see if Brodo has any information about other ones? Yes, and there are a number of other ones, but the distribution um, matches really well on the SAIA. And I think that everyone here has probably seen them in our area. I'd say the tilt and match is more likely to get on the online. I think it, it does say there's a tiny test. But it doesn't know if that's it. Is that common for most of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my best guess. Faya, based on Broda? Yeah, just in the overall appearance, it really looks like Faya. Some of the other umbilic areas are a um, little different shading color. They might have uh, Isidia. Uh, the underside, as as we don't have the underside, that's also a character. Some of them have um, different texture on the underside. But pretty much uh, seeing that brown color, I think Faya is the best set. Yeah. For Zabby. Right on. So I don't know if you guys have seen anything that you want to look at, but if you don't, I actually want to look at this other one by the same user on INET. That was sort of interesting to me. That may not be quite identifiable based on these pictures, but it's pretty neat looking. Uh, I wanted to download this. So, sorry, here's the URL. And actually, it looks like someone's already, <laughs> looks like Tom has already identified this as a Parma tree. I didn't realize there was a discussion around this. Um, but let me get this up in the window. So this is another SoCal uh, contribution. This one looks like it's from Santa Barbara County but also in the transverse range is kind of close to the coast. Hannah, do you have any opinion on this one? I support Tom's input. <laughs> I don't suppose you can get to species, can you? No. It's, pretty, it's a pretty uh, tiny specimen in the photo. It's kind of hard to get... What would you want to see to get to this to get this to species? Uh, in general, I think it's great if if possible to get pictures of the underside of them, mm -hmm. um, because some of the different attachment points on the bottom, or depending on some of the characteristics of the bottom, could help indicate. It looks young to me, but. Uh, Sometimes they can be confusing when they're younger because some of the characteristics aren't as developed, but I'm no professional expert. Shelly might know. <laughs> yeah, this one is probably is a young, a young phallus, a young lichen. Um, so for, for this one, they, they typically have iridium, and I don't think it's, it's better. Can you, you can zoom in? I guess the area I'd like to see is... Um, I don't know what is that like a little twig or a needle that's on the left-hand side, but if you can zoom in below that, that 
lower left-hand corner looks quite interesting. It might have some characteristics that would identify it as the genus that Tom had mentioned. Yeah, that's good in there. It's um, so it's hard to say. Like it's you know, this lichen would have ceridia kind of on the the load margin, and it doesn't look like much happening. Um, also for Parmatrina, they they often will have cilia, black cilia on the margin. And I thought maybe I I saw some down in that corner, but zooming in, I don't see anything very obvious with cilia. Yeah, I don't see any cilia. Do you notice the uh, white lined rim, kind of where the pine needle or whatever the twig is, kind of hits the center of it? Yeah. Do you think that's just the lighting, or do you think that's fluid around the entire specimen? Well, there's some ceridia. Yeah, yeah, and you picked it out. There's some ceridia right there. It's hard to see, though. Yeah. <laughs> It is, but it's just it's just starting to form. So I think right on the edge of that little lobe, that's some ceridia. And if we saw little black cilia, these fine little hairs coming off the margin, then we'd know for sure that it's parmotrema. Um, but if the overall look of the lichen um, has that, you know feel of a parmotrema, but without seeing that cilia, you know you kind of question a little bit what's going on there. So, question for you or anyone: the fact that it's coming from the center first does that indicate anything as well? Like, probably it's younger, and all the resources are kind of in the center and then go outward, or some yeah, other I, explanation? I think I mean, sometimes the ceridia forms. It, it would make sense, I think, and I can't remember on this lichen, if the ceridia form first in the older parts of the lichen, and so the center is going to be the older part of the skin. Out on the outer edge, that's the youngest part. The lobes are just growing outward from there, and so they haven't had a chance to develop ceridia yet. Okay, Tom is watching our YouTube broadcast, but he's not he's not a part of the hangout, I don't think. Tom, can you hear us? He can he, he can hear us, but he's not participating in the hangout, so we'll we'll never hear him unless he can unless he can get in here. Um, he's just watching. And also he's watching on a on a on a delay, I'm afraid. Anyway, cool. So I'm just gonna leave them leave a, a comment on that one that we think it's Parmatrema, but not entirely. Did you guys see any that you wanted to, to check out? Tom's actually been really, really good about going through these. Find one by someone else. Yep. We don't have it up to scroll through, so whatever looks interesting to you, if you want to just pick any of that's good with us. I will do so. Let me find one. Bye. <laughs> Zappy. <laughs> um, what about you, this one? Do you know Sorry, Zabby? No, I have no idea who he is. We should um, share this with Zabby. Yeah, I will leave him a comment once we we're done. I can you know we can link to the different positions in the YouTube video. So I'll send him a link to the part of this video where we talk talk to him. Um, so this one you can you guys all see that? Oh, yep. Um, this looks like another one from SoCal, but this one's closer to San Diego. This is by iNaturalist user Fanatic. Um, it looks like some kind of um, Man, what's the word I'm looking for? Not fruticose, not crustose. <laughs> Folio? Folios, thank you. <laughs> Losing my mind. Um, but yeah, that's what it seems to be growing on a rock. Um, and let me open up a larger version of that. Um, not that one. Oh, 
URL. Would... <laughs> Sorry. URL. All right, can you guys all see that? Yeah. It it looks like kind of looks like a fissia. A fissia? Fissia, yeah. Right. And getting the species would be really hard. Uh, <laughs> you, so what? Uh, what are you seeing here that, that leads there, to I mean, there's a lot of... Okay, so um, this year are really common. They're, they're really common on rocks, but they also occur really commonly on bark, too. Um, but a white foliose lichen that's pretty tightly pressed to the substrate um, and growing on rock, um, those are all pretty pretty good characters of this year. Uh, what really nails it down is this EFF is a chemical test. And uh, yeah, so if you do a K test on Cisia, it's it's K plus yellow on the cortex. And so that's the first thing we want to do to really know that you have the genus Cithia, you do a, a K test on the surface of the lichen, and it's Cithia is going to turn K test to yellow. Cool. And, but to get to species, what would you need? So then to, do, to get to species, you probably have to do some more chemical tests. Oftentimes you have to cut the upper cortex off and do some other chemical tests on the medulla the middle mm -hmm. part of the life skin. Um, and then other important things you'd be looking for, iridia or isidia. Um, another important thing to tell if it's a different genus is to look underneath the lichen and look at the rhizomes, the little anchoring structures that hold up to the rock. But pretty much if you do the K-test and the surface of a white lichen like this, if it's a plus yellow, you are pretty much automatically at this yet. If you don't get K plus yellow, then it's it's another genus that looks a lot like this yet. And so in order to tell what genus that would be, you would want to look at these risings on its underside. Okay. Looking at rising. Sorry, did you say that that, that Fissia Fissia can have risings. You're just saying that the nature of the risings might help distinguish it. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you you look at the the color the color of the underside, whether the risings or branch or if they're simple. Um, but yeah, this has risings, and then there's there's a couple other genera that are similar. There's um, there's Theophysia and Thistonia, which can can be confused depending on what what specimen you've got. Gotcha. Um. Cool. Fissia. <laughs> it's spelled the way I think it is? Good. <laughs> P-H-Y-S-C-I-A? Right. Um, cool. All right. So I left him a comment about that. Um, I have an interesting photo to share that I awesome. found on the, the site. Can you paste the link in? Was it received? Yes. It's just a really great photo. <laughs> Looks like a cladonia. And there's some beautiful moss there. Of course, I like the photo. Have you seen it, Shelly? Um, not yet. I just invented the link. Hey guys, you still there? Yeah, you missed the party. I 
That one was not my fault. I think that was Google's fault. Um, okay. There was a party in my absence. Yeah. How dare you? Did you see the link? Yes. Um, right, sharing sure. now. So you guys can see this? And I'm going to download a copy of this guy. So this one looks like it was taken up in Sonoma County by the Russian River by iNaturalist user Thoth. Um, I'm not sure how he really wants us to pronounce that, but Thoth works. So guys, what do you think this one is? Yeah, it looks like a Cladonia. Okay, got to genus. Yeah, so this is, um, you know, they call this group of Sclodonia the Pixie Cup because it's got these cool little goblet shaped cups. And uh, there's a couple, it's, there's a couple different species that are, that look pretty similar. And how you tell them apart is you look at, you can kind of see this lichen has little granules all over it kind of up the stalk and then inside the cup. And um, I think a lot of times there's a general grouping that's, that's named to these because, oh yeah, that's good. You can see the texture of that. So those granules, those are ceridia. And um, yeah, and a lot of times I think people apply Clodonia uh, chlorophea group to this because sometimes it's hard to get the species. But um, yeah, so in that Sporophea group, there's a handful of different species, and, and one of them, Sidonia Sporophea itself, we look at the, the granules, and um, they're, they're kind of like granular ceridia inside the cup. And then if the granules are super fine inside the cup, then it goes to different species. The super fine granules are um, Sidonia Fibriot. But these are the kind of a little more coarse. I guess I would be leaning more closer to chlorophyll, but only chlorophyll. What would the um, actually, Shelly and Christine? Is it possible for you guys to move the microphone closer to you? You can come a little closer to you. <clears throat> okay. Because I can hear Hannah really well, but I can't hear you guys quite as well. Okay. Um, I also wanted to comment that I think the moss is a centrichia. A what? Centrichia. It's a genus. The moss genus, centrichia. Centrichia. C I C Y. No, no, no. I'll type it for you. <laughs> moss IDs are like a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Not that we don't like mosses, we love mosses. Um, so you, sorry, Shelly, you were thinking that this is a uh, Cladonia chlorophea, um, just based on the size of the granules in the cup. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so Cladonia because it's um, well, anyway, yeah, Cladonia because it's these these uh, stalks with the cups on them, and yeah, chlorophea because the the three are a little bit more coarse. Granules. And course can you zoom back of, out a little? Relative, right? I mean, like it is relative. It would be really nice to have um, something right next to it that you would see a fine, the fine grain. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and and that's what like I find this one really hard because if I don't have the fimbriata is the one that has the really fine ceridia. And if I don't have a comparison, because yeah, that's like a subjective cause. Of course, is it fine? You kind of need something to calibrate. Um, but just looking at this one, it just it feels a little more on the coarse side to me. So <laughs> that's my guess. So what about Cladonia asahine? That's what this user um, identified it as, but I'm not sure if that even exists in North America. It seems like it does. Oh, let me let me check and see. 
an I in. Where, where is the name? What is the name on that again? What did you suggest? Oh, okay. I just I just pasted it in. It's Cladonia asahine, like okay. asahi. Yeah, let me check in the key and see what what it says. Okay, so it's Cladonia let me see. I'm just looking to see that. Oh, yeah. Anna, do you know your Clodonians at all? No, but Shelly's the best I know of anyone. Okay. <laughs> that says a lot. Thanks, Thanks Anna. No problem. Can you, can you zoom back down a little bit? Yeah, totally. But I got the moss on this one, you guys. You need to pull your weight on the lichen. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hope you find one of the salamander in it so I can help out with that one. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I'm checking out in this key the difference between the Corfea and this Asahine. Oh, okay, so so I'm looking in uh, in macrolectins of the Pacific Northwest, uh -huh. and so the so the key break the split between chlorophyll and asahine is um, it says clodicea. Those are the stalks. So the clodicea granular or powdery ceridium on the outside, and the medulla is UV minus. And then to go to the other one, to go to Asahine, the break says Cadicia warpy, or with Ceridia compounding into numerous tiny projections. The medulla is UV minus or UV plus. Did you so say hanging it projections? Like for the, it, said, it said the, um, the Ceridia compounding into numerous tiny projections. Oh. So I'm not sure. I guess it would be interesting to look at different picture. We're looking in Brodo and I don't really see what that would look like in the photo in Brodo. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture on the on the lichen portal and I'm not and it's another Sharnoff picture, but it's not really showing enough detail. Yeah, so it sounds like the Padisha would be warty. Have like warts on it, and I don't, I don't really see that. So, do you want to go with chlorophyll on this one? Yeah, or you know what you could do is I've I've seen other people that <laughs> they'll cast the net pretty broad and they'll take chlorophyll group, which I think includes like chlorophyll and fimbriata, and I think even this this. Asahine are, are in that group too. All right, I'm gonna go with Chlorophea since we don't have the sort of like infra generic groups on our naturalist. Um, okay. So I just gonna look real quick. Often Bruce has a lot of. Uh, Bruce McEwen's book, Macrolectin, has uh, some good comments. I'm just going to read the comments under Corpea. Catch that. You were saying that the, the, the Soretti are sort of grouped into dangling clusters on the stalk of it? Yeah, it said on the stock. Okay.
I'll be right back, you guys. Cool. All right, we'll go with Chlorophea then. Yeah, I was reading. There's another, another part about um, some comments on that, and yeah, it sounds like on. Um, uh, it sounds like yeah, the either it's the cerudia, or there are these kind of ascidia-like projections on that stalk, and so that's characteristic for the asahine. Um, that's, and that's not present for Chlorophea. <laughs> so the stalk is pretty chunky yeah. on this, but that's, that doesn't look like enough like projections to you? I don't think so. It would be good, you know, and I don't know if I've seen this, the Asahi It would be good to see a picture of that to see what these, you know, how obvious are these really like projections. I don't know if I've seen those, but this photo doesn't look like it has anything like that. Right. Okay. Cool. And that screen share. Yeah, Helps when you don't leave your own hangout. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I could rejoin, though. At least that works. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough conversation. I know. All right, let's find ourselves another lichen to look at. I had a good one up here somewhere. Not that one. Here, this one's pretty good. Screen share this guy. Maybe the projection is like off. Yeah, we have a projection that doesn't need to be But I mean, maybe the guy is on the So this lichen was, this picture was taken by iNaturalist user Belinda on Mount Diablo here in the Bay Area. Um, looks like it's on a rock. Let me see if she said anything else about it. Yep, definitely on a rock. Um, looks like it's on the north side of the mountain if you know Mount Diablo at all. And I'll show you guys the big picture. Oops. Can you guys see that? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, any opinions? Like, um, yeah, so for the orange, the most, <laughs> the, the bright, showy orange one, um, yeah, if it's orange like that and it's a crust, uh, it pretty much goes to uh, Caloplaca. Caloplaca. Yeah. Now, I find crusts really intimidating and scary. <laughs> yeah, but so. you know the thing about this one, so like, you know there's not that many bright orange lichens, and so, you know, if we, we know if it's, if it's folios and it's bright orange, it's probably going to be a xanthoria or one of those types of lichens. And then if it's fruticose and it's bright orange, it's pretty much going to be a teleshipsy. And then if it's a crust and it's bright orange, it's pretty much going to be a teleflaca. Cool. Um, that's good to know. That's what makes them a little slightly less scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how about getting the species on Calaplaca? Is that even remotely possible? Or That one's really hard, yeah. Pretty much, you know, for the crust, you pretty much have to look at the spore structure to get the species. And um, 
some people can do site ID on them, but I just don't know them enough to, to venture that. Like I can, at least from this one, I can get to Genus, but that's about as far as I can go. Yeah. So leaving Belinda a comment or an identification. Cool. That's fine. That's a very nice photo, also. Yeah, go Belinda. <laughs> nice shot. Well, speaking of photos, I'd love to see anybody's photos that would like to enter them into our calendar. Oh, Christine, cool. there was a question. Yeah. Is it limited to California because it never indicates that? And I shared it with um, the Facebook group Lichens Connecting People. Oh, and yeah. there was some interest, but then people were second guessing it because we're cows. And I said, well, I'll ask, but it doesn't specifically say that. So, unless yeah. I misread it, but. I'm referring to Sally. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I thought we, we had sent out some emails regarding us kind of getting a vibe on it. I mean, I guess it does kind of make sense that we keep them in California, or at least, you know, they have part of their range within California. Um, but we, I guess we had to really define that very clearly when we set out for this, the project. Yeah. It wasn't defined, and it's, and I, I, I don't know, in my um, curiosity along the way, it seems like we could get some really interesting photos if we left it looser. Um, but then maybe that it there's it depends on what your goal was for the calendar. If it had to be, you know, like Shelley was mentioning, California, or if it would be neat if it was like, you know, uh, a more broader. So, but I would say if you do come to a conclusion, maybe a, a follow up note on the posting would be great, so then people would know. Okay. And in the meantime, please encourage anyone who has a photo to send it along and let them know that decisions like that will be made in the, in the uh, judging stage. Uh, when we it's hard to hear you. I'm sorry. Encourage everyone to send the photos, if possible, regardless of where they're from at this point. And um. we'll clarify. Should they email them to you, or can people post things on to our Twitter feed or to our Google Plus or Facebook pages? Sure. Uh, the announcement has given my address, but anything is fine. Gotcha. As long as that. Yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, yeah, absolutely. Anything is fine. Anything that works for people. Cool. And Christine, just since we're talking about it, what's your deadline so we can remind everyone? The life Great. We'd what? like to <laughs> yeah, get it out in the fall. So, maybe Awesome. Hopefully, we'll get some cool photos. Yeah, we already have gotten a few, but that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next one I wanted to look at is this guy. Kind of a weird looking, I'm not even sure it is a lichen, but um, something up in the Sierras? Yeah. Oh. Up near Donner. Um, north of Donner. This is by iNaturalist user Gary G. Um, and I'll share a, I shared the URL with you guys in the chat and I will switch to big image. Oops, would help if I loaded it up, huh? Can you guys all see that? Oh yeah. So I'm not Let's see if it actually has like apathesia. Oh, you know, I wonder if it's another umbilicaria. Really? It could be. I, I haven't seen anything like this before, so I'm not sure, but it it could it could be an umbilicaria. I've seen there's some pictures that look kinda like it. Huh. Yeah. But it's it's hard to say because can you um can you pan down some more that the lower left corner? Can you see that more? Sure. Um, that's about as far in as I can get down there. Okay. Cause, yeah, so see the um Yeah, so like right there's good. 
And it's kind of weird because these are a lot of times these umbilicate lichens that they grow really tight together, and so they're kind of all overlapping. But mm -hmm. it's um, you know the edges are, are free. They're kind of they're lifting up, and um, and it, I don't know. I can kind of just picture that because these edges are growing up, that they they probably are attached at the center point. It could very well be by the center point. Okay. And um, yeah, so looking at this one in this lower corner, you can kind of I can kind of picture how it might be one one individual thallus, and it's kind of all curling around and uh, looking a little distorted. But it could very well be an umbilicate lichen. Hmm. My copy of Brodo is in my car. It was really like poor planning on my part. <laughs> I was like, really a bellicaria? I got to go check this out. Yeah. Let me scan around and see if I can see any. I'll flip through and see if I can see any pictures. Christine, you've done a lot of collecting in the Sierra, right? I have. That's not one I've done at all, actually. Hmm. I'm wondering. Um, do they have any other details like the attitude or the plant community that is in? Yeah, so Gary says that this is a black folios lichen with white edges growing on volcanic lahar formations at about 8,300 oh. feet. Lahar? Yeah. L-A-H-A-R. Okay. Volcanic lahar formations, so that, that would make it very neat. But, um, Sorry, did you say mafic? Sorry? Did you say mafic? Uh, no, sorry, I added the <laughs> Oh. Um. <laughs> it would be neat to know the texture of it, like if it felt squishy or if it was pretty hard or if it was kind of because it's the the image. It is hard to tell. Some of the edges look like they're coming up, but was it more flat, about two inches high at its highest point, or? Yeah. So I guess here's one. So we're just looking through Brodo, and maybe you guys can look up pictures of this one on the internet and see it. Here's an umbilic area. It's called umbilic area. What is it? Yeah, Kusara. And I can write it in the. Can you spell it? Uh, here, I'll put it in the. But so if you look at if you look at pictures of this one, at in Brodo, it kind of has the same really tightly packed, jumbled look. <laughs> so. Let's see what you find on the internet. Hmm. It does seem to have white edges. Where's Tom? <laughs> oh, he tried. He was trying to join earlier, but he just gave up. <laughs> so next time, <laughs> need a little bit more setup time, I think. Well, this some of the images I'm finding for this one, and just a Google search, are still a little different. There's one that's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't at the say. It doesn't say a uh, species name on it. But and there's another one. What's the range of that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about uh, virginus? So we're giving you another another species to check out. Actually, yeah. this one's a Steve Sharnoff image of that species. Doesn't quite look like the one that Gary posted. That's the Right. The one, yeah, the one I shared is similar, minus the white. But the white could come out at different times because. It could be like a, uh, the salts coming out, like pruinos, right? It could be different. We don't know exactly what it is, right? Right. Right. But I guess what I was looking at is just kind of the growth form, the habit of it. Like it's similar to those to that that umbilic area. Did you see the one I sent? I'm sharing it now. 
Okay. Yep. I can see that one. It's a little yeah, different, that though. But yep, <laughs> it looks darker. Um, yeah. So I don't know if we can get the right species, but it kind of seems like it might be an umbilicaria. I mean, I think just the habit of it, how it's growing, looks looks like some of these other umbilicarias. Well, that's pretty cool. So there's no good match in Brodo. Man, I wish I hadn't left mine in the car. No, there's not. Nothing hmm. that looks quite like that anyway. So did you see Apothecia on that one, Penny G? I did. I saw some structures that might have been. Um, let me screen share that one again so you guys can see. Um, see how that there's like a bunch of circular stuff in the lower left, and it sort of looks like Apothecia, but I don't really know. Can you zoom in on those? I can, well, this image is not that high res, so I can kind of get closer, but it just looks pixelated. Oh, yeah, those dark, some of those dark blobs could be apothecia. Yeah, it's hard to tell, though. Yeah, so I don't really know. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell them that we think it's probably umbilicaria, but not one. Yeah, so that, that would be an interesting one. Like, there again, if, if they were to pop it off the rock, and then photograph the underside, that would be really helpful. All right. This one might be a bit tricky because the, uh, it's not, let me screen share this. So this is by iNaturals user Girl Falcon. It's kind of a distant uh, image, so it might, may or may not be identifiable. Um, she thinks that it's something like Xanthoria, but um, would like confirmation. Let's see if I can download one that is <laughs> relatively large. We've got more bryos. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah, can you do a bonus bryo ID? That's really far, <laughs> a far shot, though. It's just pixel. So I'll share a bigger version of that image. Can you guys see that? It, it almost looks crust-like. There's like a lot of stuff kind of like blending together in like a brain-like pattern. Yeah. And it, is that as, that's as crisp as the image gets, yeah? Unfortunately, yeah, that's about as close as I can get it. Yeah. So like we were saying earlier with that other, we, we saw a caloplast earlier, and if this, it's hard because the, the image isn't that crisp to tell if it's really a crust or if it's Folio. Some of the foliose ones can be pretty tightly oppressed. Um, so if it was foliose, it would be Xanthoria. But if it is truly a crust, it would be a Caloplasta. Gotcha. And the reason why I'm not sure if it's foliose or not, some of the Caloplastas have lobes. Like you can see on the edge of this one, they, they are kind of divided, and they do look like these little branched lobes. And so that's a character more of foliose-type lichen, but some of the crests also show that same sort of edge. And the deal is, is like, you know, if it's a crust, it's really tightly pressed. It usually doesn't have a lower cortex. It's just really tight on its, on its substrate. Um, and then the foliose lichen, you know, you can usually um, you know, scrape them off their substrate without removing the substrate with it. And typically, they have a lower cortex, too. But yeah, this is looking pretty crusty. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how crusty is this like a kind of? I'd say um, <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to see if she had a, a bigger a bigger picture, but I guess that's that's about. Looks like a cool one though, and some cool moss. If only we could identify that moss. It's too small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go into macro mode. 
Yeah. Uh, other dark. It looks mm -hmm. like there's some other dark mm, brown lichen up in there too. But yeah, there seems to be a number of things on this rock, but it's yeah. really tough to say. Mm -hmm. Good rock though. Yeah. All right, let me find us another one to look at. Um, you guys want to look at like one or two more? We'll one or two more. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I think we tried this one last time. That's close enough. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of the early contributions to this project were by me, and I don't want to identify my own like. And, oh. Yeah, but maybe we should. Maybe we should. Yeah, pick one of yours. Okay, change of pace. We'll go. <laughs> we'll look at one of mine that apparently that needs identifying. Yeah, um, why not? We're all learning. Where was this one? This looks okay. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see that one? Uh, let me. Yeah. Screen share. This guy. Oh, it's a moss. There is moss in there as well, mm -hmm. Hannah, just for you. Um, so this was taken uh, north of Mount Tam, I believe at the entrance to the Cataract Trail, if you guys have ever been there. Um, it's a oh, really yeah. shaded, moist area, lovely trail. Um, Cool for mosses and lichens and mushrooms and it's a great all kinds photo. Of stuff. Thank you. Um, and yeah, this was in the middle of winter in, in 2012, which was actually a really uh, dry winter, if I recall. Um, so I had my own opinion on this, but I never really got a confirmation. Um, let me try and share the image. Oh, open the image first. So can you guys see this? Oh no, I'm not screen sharing anymore. Can you guys see that picture? Um not yet. No. Okay. Make you guys have the URL. Yeah, I mean your photo is pretty great, even just at like the large, you know, size. The lichen has tons of little. I mean, I don't know if those are all apothecia, but they're definitely neat looking. <laughs> I agreed, and that's why I took the photo. I'm pretty sure they're apothecia. I'm not but sure what else. But that's a lot, though. It yeah, seems small tons. to have that many, but it was. Let me see. It was maybe like as big as the palm of your hand. Like it was. It was not gigantic. Um. Yeah. So this would be a good one for Tom because I think did you did you guess it was a leptogium? Yeah. So my opinion was that it was leptogium platinum. Um. It's well, a really sim at. similar looking picture in Brodo. Yeah, we, we have that open. <laughs> Apparently what I wrote was the pick of L platinum in Brodo and Sharnoff as a dead ringer, but I kid you not, they say Leptogium platinum is 200 to 500 micrometers thick when wet, which is thicker than L californicum or L polycarpum, two related western species. And I was just like, really, micrometers? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so that's one thing when when you're um, Tom really likes the Lepto Gym, and so he could probably do a, a confirmation a site ID on, on this one pretty easily. And um, so Lepto Gym and Kalima are they, they look really similar, and you have to do a cross section and look at it underneath the scope and look at some of the cellular structure. 
And so that's why they're talking about micrometers because you're probably already using your your compound microscope to look at some other features. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah. But I mean, like, isn't the I mean, if you're talking about micrometers of thickness, isn't that going to? I guess it says micrometers when wet. I was just going to say it, that's going to vary wildly when based on like how wet it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so what you want to do is flat, platinum. Platinum, yeah. And that has that name. No, that's a good Okay. This one is on this side, baby. Yeah, so let's just look at some characters. Oh, so can you zoom in and so did you see any Isidia on this or or not? So, I think there are Isidia here. See these things in the middle? Yeah, can you zoom in on them? That's about it, like oh, okay, yeah, I see in there. Yeah, right. So what's going on there? Does the Isidia or it could be the lobule. They could. Yeah, so, so for, for platinum, Iridia and Acidia are absent, but it does have these laminal lobules. And so I think those are looking more like lobules. They look like, almost like little, um, little spongles. But that's good. That's what platinum has. Good. And it has abundant apothecia. And so yes. the other thing that you look at for this one, like, you know, how thick it was. For a lot of these lepsogeums, you do have to cut them, you have to do cross-section, and you look at it underneath the, the compound microscope, and you need to see what the structure is of the medulla. Like, if it's dense with that high state, or if it's loose with that. Um, it's that looks like it has a little white. That one has little acidia on it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. a nice reverse. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you think those are acidia and not little squamules or something? Or well, so lobules? In that, yeah, in the upper, upper left-hand corner, uh -huh. those almost look like acidia to me because they just look like little warts. Huh. But maybe, huh. maybe they're going to develop further, I can't tell. But mm -hmm. in the picture, they look a little more wart-like. Yeah, some of them are very, like, rounded, in a way. Yeah. Okay, so the Acidia lead away from platinum, is that right? Yeah, in my notes I have it, it's, it's um, no, no Ceridia, no Isidia. But it does have the um, lobules. All right, I'll leave a comment on my own. Yeah, I mean, you should you should flag this book for Tom because he's he's really good with the leptogiums, and he could probably tell you one way or the other. And especially if you can zoom in on the Isidia lobule thing. Gotcha. Uh, I I'm sorry we couldn't get Tom on today. Next yeah. time. All right, let's do at least one more, and then we'll call it a day. Okay. And I'm going to have to escape this in a moment before you do this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. but so, bye, Christine. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for seeing me. Thanks for joining us, Christine. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, Kenichi, one more thing. So I was looking. There's two types of bryophytes in the photo. Oh, right. Um, but I... It's hard to tell on just the angle, but one may or may not be right to the adelphus, and one may or may not be a dicranum. I could be completely off, but dicranums typically have pretty long leaves, and the one that has the longer, kind of more open star look, and then the more straight one could be the uh, right to the adelphus. Sometimes people call it like cattail moss. 
but it's hard to tell, and I don't know how big they are or what exactly it's growing on. But um, yeah, well, that's interesting. I haven't actually heard of either of those groups. I kind of the the star ones. I was almost thinking might be Timiella. Well, well, most most moths are star form looking. Well, <laughs> some are more star formed than others. Are you talking about yeah. the ones that, at the top of the that photo, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well they're both at the top, but yeah. <laughs> um, but that's how you can distinguish between a liverwort, is that the, uh, the, the moss usually always give you some sort of star or spiraled star shape, whereas the, uh, the more leafed liverworts are bilateral. Right. Well, thanks. And, but it might not be right, but yeah. Right. I tried. It's good to have even a lead on, on mosses. I mean, like, like, like lichens, they can be quite difficult. I can show the picture to Dan. He'll know. Dan who? Dan Norris, the moss oh, man. Oh, yeah, he, he definitely would know. <laughs> um, let me just find us one more. That one's pretty straightforward. I'm trying to find one that's nice and detailed. And that doesn't have any IDs. Okay. So we'll look at this one last. And screen share. Another Zabby? This is another Zabby. He posted a ton of lichens. <laughs> And this is also in Southern California, Ventura County. <clears throat> I can't really tell what the habitat's like. It looks pretty, oh, I was going to say it looks pretty barren, but uh, maybe not. Maybe chaparral. Um, and let me share that one. All right. So okay. it's a crust. I got that far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's two. There's two genera. Like I. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what species it is, but there's two. Um, there are some. The Acrospora is one genus that has a yellow crust that looks like that. Acarospora? Yeah, Acarospora. Rhizocarpon, maybe? Uh, it's not, it's not, there are Rhizocarpons that are yellow, um, yellow and black, some of them. Um, but I think the way I can see, there are, I think there are some Acrospora in there, and I think they're different than the ones for, for Rhizocarpon. Okay. I see some. But yeah, it's hard to, there's not very many. Yeah. Like uh, indent, they look kind of like indent, indentions maybe, or puckers or something. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Like in this little one, I think that, um, yeah, if you zoom in, we could see if we can pick anything out. They, they really blend in. Shelly, I'm going to send a link in, in, a, in an ideal world, maybe it would look like that. Okay. Let me click on your link. Because it does have similar uh, thallus teeth, like teeth-like lobing formation kind of, but it's only the a zoom in, we don't see the outskirt edges of the lichen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To see how uh, it kind so, of uh, flares out around the edge. Yeah, actually, I'm not I'm not getting that link yet. Oh, did it not work? So she pasted it in, but I'm sharing an image of it right now. Oh, okay. Is that the one, Hannah? Yeah, if you click on the actual link or the actual picture, maybe it's bigger. I don't know. Uh, nope, that seems. Might a bit not cool. let you. Yeah. 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 
but but it it seems different than that a little bit, but yeah, it doesn't seem to have those little I don't know holes. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, that is that not one, a technical term. Yeah, that one has the more oh yeah, pleopsidium. Yeah, so that what what is the one that's actually shown? The they're not saying they're saying it's either of, Acrospora or Pleopsidium. Yeah, yeah. So when I said there were two genera, like that, that's my answer too. I think the specimen we're looking at is either an Acrospora or a Pleopsidium, and I was All forgetting right. the name of the other genus. Yay! Glad I could help. Yeah. <laughs> so Acrospora. Ac But you, you got cut off there. You spelled Pleopsidium? P L E, it's on that site. They send. That's right. I can just copy and paste. Yeah. Because it's a kind of yellow crust. Or yeah. And I, I guess. I guess because we're not seeing, you know, that the pleopsidium, it did have more defined at the theme. And this one, we're really not seeing them. So I guess I might be seeing a little bit closer to Acrospora. In in Acrospora, the apothecia are, are harder to see because they just they blend in so much more. I sent another link that's an image of a pleopsidium. But, I mean, they're really, it's hard to tell. And also, I think as a going forward on a photo like this, it's great to have the zoom in for the texture, but it's also great to see the growth form as a whole because some of the uh, the margins are different as it gets to different parts of the growth. So it's it's interesting to see how like the the style in which it grows because that's a characteristic that might differ it from another. Yeah, you're right, Hannah. It does, that is pretty important to see how it grows apart. It grows kind of in a continuous shield. Or if those little, um, like each of the, each of those little um, stepping stones, they're called aerials. So each little little um, kind of chinked out piece of the lichen, whether those little aerials are kind of all continuous, or if they can kind of grow scattered and separate from each other, um, those things are all important in figuring out which species you have. So I just sent another link um, of a Sharna photo of Pleopsidius, but it's uh, a Pleopsidium, and it's interesting because it does show the edges of the growth form. I don't know if Kenichi can show it to you. Yes, but I can. Just as an example to those who are potentially going to listen to this. <laughs> so this is another Steve Sharna photo, and I'm trying to enlarge here. And that's why it's useful to see a, a zoomed out image as well as a zoomed in textural image. That's a pretty cool which looking like. But, um, cool. Do you guys have any more comments about this one? Nope. Nope. That's it. Alright. I'm going to leave my comments and say that we're done for the evening. Thanks so, for taking notes. You got it. Thanks for I, participating. I made a list of the users on iNaturalist that we commented on. Um, we should potentially make sure to send them some sort of message saying thank you or something. Sure, absolutely. And I'll Great. I'll send them I'll send them links to these uh, the moments in this YouTube video where we talked about their photos too. I'm sure it'll be fascinating. And I'll be riveted to their screens. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they will. Yeah. Um, cool. Do you guys have anything more you want to say before we close out? Thanks no, for thanks again. Alrighty. Well, thanks everyone, and hopefully we'll see you next month on Ask a Lichenologist. Uh, okay. Till next time. <laughs>